you get one color on top, a different color on the bottom. Kind of an interesting color. Their black and the blue turned out awesome. The color down into the cavities. What's happening, fish and friends? Welcome to another episode. Today we're doing a little bait making. As you can see, I mixed up a few colors. Uh, this is a couple colors I had left over. Kind of gives us this neon green watermelony with a bunch of sprinkles in it. Uh, I also mixed up a pretty sweet blue sapphire color with some blue highlights in it. Uh, I think it turned out pretty cool, if I do say so myself. Some black, uh, and then also some black with purple flakes a debo favorite suck some of this up and i'm going to be shooting the new bushy beetle from do it molds now this is the four cavity mold a sand cast mold that's what it looks like after you shoot all the different plastics up in that let that dry and then pop it open and this is what the old bushy beetle looks like awesome little texas rig can be used as a trailer i've got a number of different ways i'm going to use it and i'm going to show you a number of different ways that you can mess with this plastic when you're pouring in your garage so I made some of these in this green color and cut the heads off. The heads off? Why? Well, I cut all four of those off so we can do a little project here. I'm going to take those heads uh, along with this blue, sucked up some of this and made some more of these heads that I can cut off in this blue sapphire. I also did some dual injecting so that blue and green together. I used my splitter. I've got a special bushy beetle uh, mold back here you're going to see in a second. And then uh, again with these sand cast, uh, get rid of the extras. Pop this one open, and this is the new CNC Bushy Beetle. So I'm excited to show you this one. I'm going to give you an up-close look uh, at what this looks like on the table and how I plan on using these. But this thing turns out pretty dang sweet. Now, also taking those blue heads that I cut off, put them in the CNC mold just like this. I'm going to shoot my other solid color over top of it. So it's going to give me different color flippers or claws here on the back after I put it together. Uh, get my color. I used that black with the purple flake. Shot it down in there. And that's what it looks like. I accidentally uh, messed up the uh, one pincher deal there and cut one leg off. But that's what it looks like. And I'm going to show you these up close because this is a really cool concept if you want a light color on those claws uh, and then a dark color over it. So enough yapping about it. Let's take a closer look at some of these. Yes, taking a closer look at what we made, you're really going to be able to see the difference between these two. So in making these, I shot a little bit of each. So these are just the regular uh, ES, uh, whatever mold, I forget what the name of it is. I'll have all these linked down below with my link. Uh, this is what you get uh, just on the regular. So it's the multiple cavity mold. You can shoot multiple of these and it gives it this kind of cool matte finish. You can see there it's got, you know, all the imperfections from the, the sand cast mold, which I think actually looks more lifelike. Now the one thing I did notice that on the, the sand cast, always around like the hook slot here, it didn't want to completely uh, shoot there all the time and fill in. Uh, it's not an issue to me. Your hook's still going to fit down in that slot, and I think a 4 out hook is perfect if you're throwing this on a Texas rig. And this is what it looks like with the CNC mold. So you can see the difference between the two. A very glossy, shiny finish with the CNC, um, with that sand cast mold, more of a matte, uh, less perfect look to it. Now I will say that on the the CNC mold with that glossy cleaner look you can see the the sparkle and flakes anything like that you put in there easier in that with that kind of shiny uh, finish on it as opposed to this one I don't think the flakes show up as much you can still see them in there uh, but on the gloss one they do show up a little bit easier same as when you add like the iridescent highlight powder so you can see kind of the sheen of blue on this this was a green pumpkinish brown that I made you can see kind of the sheen of blue on here, but you really can't see the exact like iridescent flaky powder. Whereas you get the CNC version up close here and you can really see all those little blue kind of powdery flakes throughout the plastic there. Now, will that make a difference to a fish? Probably not. But if you're somebody that's, you know, looking to make baits, you want these to look as clean as possible, the CNC will do that a little bit better. Uh, but overall, the Bushi uh, is a sweet little plastic. I really enjoyed making these. So that's like the green pumpkin with some blue highlight. I also did some of the dual injection. So using the dual injector and doing two different colors. So you get one color on top, a different color on the bottom. And depending kind of how hard you push on each one, they can mix a little bit different. So this was like that purpley plum kind of color, dark color that I made mixed with with this like sandy green pumpkin-y watermelon-y. I don't really know what color this was. It's got some different flake, orange, blue flake and stuff. Really it was just different colors uh, pucks that I had left over and mixed them up. But you put this color with that purple, shoot them together and you get kind of this. Pretty neat. Now if you only have one injector, you can still do some really fun stuff with this. So I made some of these colors. This was an accident color. This was orange and I was going to put some iridescent red highlight powder in it. You can see the highlight powder in there, but when I uh, put it in, I just took the cup and was kind of tapping it. 
and way too much went in there and it turned out to be this orangey peach super reflective highlighty uh, toxic color I used this uh, kind of in some of the tank stuff so you can see how bright it was but kind of an interesting color now this might be good around spawn or something if you're sight fishing but the idea is you shoot one color so I was using the sand cast mold for this shot four of these cut the heads off and you can do this like different tail head colors so you take the head cut it off put it in the uh, the mold like I was showing you shoot your color on top of it and you can get a different head color did the same there with that black and the green CNC there you can see it's a little bit shinier black and the blue turned out awesome or if you want something a little bit more subtle you can cut off just barely at the eyes and have just the the fins the flapper parts there a different color with most of the body the same color so it's really just kind of trial and error I was mixing up you know kind of cutting them at different lengths seeing how they looked there's some more of those with that green pumpkin blue and the little orange flippers on it. That's a really fun way to do that to get a different head color. Of course, you could just make lighter colors and dip them. However, if you have a darker color like this, a green pumpkin, and try to dip this in orange, it's not going to be that bright. It's not going to be light. It's going to be this brownish covered with an orange, so it's going to be real dark. So neat way to get a light color on those flappers. And then I also did a little fun with uh, just pouring a little bit of color down into the cavity. So taking your, your mold, one half of the mold I just poured, you know, used my Pyrex, poured some of that color in there, and that's what it looks like. So it was really just this little tiny piece in there. Put my mold back together, shot the color, and that's like a green pumpkin with that blue highlight. Shot the color over it, so if you're dragging this like on a football jig or dragging a Texas rig, Carolina rig, you can really get a different color on top of that without using you know the, the two uh, dual injector thing to do it like this where you're trying to get as close to half and half as you can. This is just kind of a different accent color on top or bottom, whichever way the, uh, the mold is exactly the same on top and bottom, so it doesn't matter. But just a different way of doing that, and you can see you can kind of get some different looks. You can go a little bit more, you can go a little bit less, but just kind of this top toxic spill looking deal on top of it. Which brings me to another good point. How do you use this? Well, you could throw it on just a Texas rig, just plain like this. That's a plain black in the CNC, which is honestly one of my favorites. But anyway, on the back of a jig trailer, uh, it looks awesome like this. This is the 5 8 ounce Jujitsu jig from War Eagle. And then I just took and cut maybe an inch off the front of that. And that's what it looks like as a jig trailer on there. Nice beefy looking profile. And you can see when you drop that in the water, how that skirt really flares out. You can actually see that inner part, uh, you know, the plastic down inside there. You could put this on a swim jig. That's what the footage of this looks like swimming back and forth on a swim jig. Um, also, when I met up with the guys, that guy Skimpy for the uh, the do-it shoot, uh, he was using them on the back of a vibrating jig, some chatterbaits that he made, uh, and he really liked it on there. So a bunch of different ways you could rig this. You know, you can rig it up and down if you've got it on a swim jig like that. You can rig it, rig it horizontally like this. So if you're coming over, you know, covering stuff, it does kind of help keep your, your bait straight up and down. Uh, but that's it. That's the colors. Comment below and let me know which color you like the most. Again, here's some like green uh, chartreuse-ish mixed with that light blue, kind of like an Okeechobee crock color. Comment below and let me know which one out of all these is your favorite because of course, uh, as any of these when I make lures, I will be giving a, a gift box away of some of these that I made, uh, some jigs to go with it, kind of a little uh, fun care package. So you can try these out that way if you don't have your own stuff, who knows, maybe it'll get you to bite the bug and uh, get into making your own plastics. All right, now today's subscribe feature and friend of the day is Corey Morton, commented on my recent Bass Pro unboxing. Uh, said he's usually not a Bass Pro guy, but like that after doing my unboxing. I appreciate that, man. Everybody who continues to watch and support me, I say it every time, but I truly do mean it. Folks like, you know, do it. The few companies that I have supporting me out there, I appreciate you folks. Everybody that watches, uh, if there's more of these bait making type of videos you wanna see, comment below and let me know. Like I said, it's gonna be winter here. Uh, it already is winter here. It's gonna be a lot of bait making over the winter here for me. So if there's certain things you wanna see me make or take you through a specific process, comment below and let me know. I'm gonna be doing more of that, more giveaways. Uh, but that's it for me. I've gotta edit. Uh, I thank you all so much for watching. And until next time. Mm -hmm.